Endometrium cancer is number one among the uh, gynecological cancers. Uh, uh, 26,000 cases a year. And with the optimistical uh, attitude uh, to the forecast, to prognosis, we can see with all of that over 6,000 uh, women die every year because of this cancer. Because unfortunately, in uh, 6% of cases, it's the fourth stage we uh, um, uh, diagnose it and uh, 13% at the third stage. So conservative treatment, surgical treatment, that works for almost 90% of uh, women. But uh, with the disseminated process, uh, unfortunately, the survival rate goes down by 30%. And uh, at the fourth um, grade, uh, the five-year survival is just 16%. Now, if we uh, take when we exhaust uh, uh, surgical opportunities for primary uh, cancer and for relapse, uh, um, uh, when um, um, there is no chance to use uh, chemotherapy, then we need to think about drugs and chemotherapy and hormone therapy. These are standards. Uh, uh, here you can see the results of a randomized uh, trials which, are recommend, which recommend uh, uh, chemotherapy for endometrium cancer. And the scheme is as follows. We compared uh, MOXA, uh, monotherapy and combined therapy. We must say that there is no significant difference, but still the, um, the doublet is preferred, and triplets even preferred with doxorubicin and uh, is used. And, uh, um, and uh, the result uh, seemed to be higher, or are believed to be higher. Um, uh, with progressive uh, survival uh, two to three years, but triplets actually are more toxic, and we still prefer today the standard chemotherapy. Um, um, uh, Still, we see that the number of responses is from 17 to 50 percent, and uh, we still can see about lower median without progressive uh, survival and overall uh, chemotherapy, uh, first-line chemotherapy. Now, if uh, it is possible, well, the hormone therapy should also be used, well known, uh, with. Uh, Megastrol acetate and uh, other um, hormones, but even during the um, disseminated process, we do not see that good results, and we do not have the third stage of the trial yet for hormone uh, uh, therapy. And clinical responses are sometimes quite good, but that's exclusive. In most cases, the clinical response is uh, not that good. The overall um, 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 survival is not good. Then you can find the second line. These are different uh, drugs. Um, as you can see, they're all listed here. And all this demonstrates that the endometrium cancer um, is a uh, chemoresistant uh, um, uh, form of this particular pathology. If we look at the American recommendations of 2020 of HCCN, then chemotherapy of first line uh, is uh, uh, that's uh, carboplatinum and uh, first of all and uh, hormone therapy which we have already mentioned our recommendations are are also um, associated with uh, um, standard uh, chemotherapy. And the second line, these are the drugs uh, and hormones that can be administered. But the response of the uh, patients to chemotherapy and hormone therapy um, of disseminated um, endometrium cancer is no higher than 15%. And so I would like to focus on the new um, approaches uh, to the tr treatment uh, target uh, therapy and immune therapy. And here uh, our opportunities are much wider thanks to the genome atlas that we have which uh, demonstrates the possibilities of testing, um, molecular testing and the potentially um, uh, effective uh, drugs. So here you can see the target therapy results and you can see the PC uh, and uh, so chemotherapy plus anti uh, um, antigenic um, um, drug, uh, bevacizumab, or uh, some other drugs as well. You can see the, the preferences with uh, um, um, 
with the first group where we have quite a high um, good uh, and good response and with a supportive uh, therapy with up, where the complete response was up to 24%. And uh, this is also reflected in the uh, survival rate. You can see the overall survival when anti um, an angiogenic therapy is uh, used uh, for the endometrium cancer, provides the effect that is uh, um, statistically um, high, and the overall survival um, reached uh, 34 months. So, uh, the uh, 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 black cell and embracin combined with um gives high response uh, to chemotherapy. Uh, together with the target drug, you can see uh, 54%. That is the level of response. At the same time, the overall survival um, um, uh, does not uh, give us any significant difference, although it was 24 months. Um, and uh, in the recommendations of NCCN, we can see uh, that uh, carboclacine uh, um, is associated with bev bevacizumab. Our recommendations do not contain this option, probably because this particular trial has not demonstrated reliable um, improvement in um, survival rate. Uh, so today we carry out a randomized uh, trial comparing three arms, um, uh, antigenic, antigenic therapy uh, inhibitors and the combination of uh, 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 these two approaches in the supportive um, uh, treatment of uh, uh, relapsing endometrium cancer. A few words about the Ceres uh, endometrium cancer. The publication of 2018 made us add another option um, uh, associated with target therapy. And uh, here is the result for 58 patients. And uh, yes, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the patients uh, with the positive results, we, uh, the transmosomab was added. Following the results of this particular uh, trial, the advantages were revealed for these particular patients uh, 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 with transfusimab added. Uh, there was uh, no, uh, there was improvement of progressive um, survival, and so in 2020, in CCN approved this particular option for the disseminated uh, serous um, endometrium cancer. So this uh, we can also find in our recommendations for 2020. Transazunab is being added for this group of patients, immune therapy. Immune therapy differs from the suggested chemotherapy and uh, target therapy. Because um, uh, uh, it's the, uh, the immune therapy affects um, uh, uh, through uh, uh, T lymphocytes and other immune competent cells. So the mechanism here is somewhat different. And uh, pembrolizumab uh, shows that thanks to the immune therapy, the immunoclonal bodies are used here, um, and uh, the, there is a blocking of the interaction between PD-1 with the ligands PDL1 and 2, and uh, which increases the anti-cancer uh, immune response. And today, um, uh, the endometrium cancer attracts attention of the uh, immunologists. Look at this particular graph. Uh, look at the predictors of the uh, tumors uh, reacting uh, to that. Uh, you can see the endometrium cancer is number one. The satellite instability and the reparation system uh, damage, uh, that's what we should consider here. It's up to 38% in the uh, endometrium cancer group. It is even higher than for the colorectal um, cancer. And uh, I would like to introduce another trial, Keynote uh, uh, 158, uh, where the immune therapy was studied for uh, different solid uh, um, tumors. And 15% were the patients with endometrium cancer, and those patients who were um, selected uh, so, uh, as a high with uh, 
uh, high um, satellite instability. So in this group, uh, the uh, administering of pembrolizumab uh, provided 57% uh, response, which is high. But in the general group, uh, where the prophecies uh, uh, of re reparation were considered, uh, this indicator was lower. Uh, were MSI stable, uh, and uh, still where the high uh, predictors uh, were, we can also find the uh, high level of response to immune therapy. And uh, you can see here exactly that in the lower part, you can see the frequency of responses, uh, reduction of the tumor um, uh, reacting to immune therapy, 30% reduction. Um, and uh, the length of response so illustrates the same uh, with um, uh, MSI high uh, up to 22 um, uh, months, 89 percent. The median uh, of the uh, length of response or duration of the response. And uh, this also is reflected in the overall survival levels. So, well, of course, immune therapy, in, these are um, uh, drugs uh, that might lead to adverse effects, uh, hypothyreosis, tyreosis, uh, different skin reactions, uh, but they are not that um, strongly manifested. and. Uh, they can be tolerated with a certain degree of correction. You can see that in the American recommendations, the patients with MSS high solid tumors are always suggested pembrolizumab and immune therapy. And the same is suggested for the endometrial carcinoma. I'd like to say that the immune, it's a mono, immunotherapy is a monoimmunotherapy. Now the question has been discussed. Uh, the in oncology, immunotherapy plus chemotherapy plus uh, target therapy plus uh, PARP inhibitors. In 2019, in ESMAR, it was a great event that was discussed uh, in terms of the endometrium cancer where immunotherapy uh, was combined with the angiogenic therapy. The trial was the following. It was one arm study trial. Patients received levantinib together with the pembrolizumab. Uh, the response rate was 40 percent, not only in MSI high, uh, where the response was 63 percent, um, but even in uh, the group where there were no uh, predictive factor. It was true for all histological types of tumors. Uh, there were patients with a different uh, status of MSI and PDL, and you can see the response uh, uh, to this therapy. Overall survival, uh, median of falling up 18 months. This trial of 2019 uh, uh, that reported adverse events uh, of uh, immunotherapy of lenvatinib and pembrolizumab for angiogenic uh, medications, hypertension, uh, hypothyreosis for lenvatinib. But adverse events were not serious adverse events. Uh, if uh, we saw the adverse events of the third and fourth degree, are uh, we only reduced uh, the dose? Immune reactions. Uh, we saw them. According to the results of the second phase of the 2019 FDA and Australian and Canadian societies, uh, they in, uh, included uh, these combinations uh, with the lenvorazumab uh, to treat lenvatinib uh, to treat patients uh, with uh, the uh, advanced uh, cancer, endometrial cancer. 
this combination of pembrolizumab plus lenvatinib, this uh, cold treatment regimen can uh, be administered for patients suffering from advanced endometrial carcinoma. Now the trial is going on comparing lenvanitinib plus pembrolizumab, the standardized uh, regimen, doxyrubicin plus paclitaxel. Uh, this trial will either prove or uh, disapprove uh, the advantages or disadvantages of the therapeutic regimen uh, for patients with advanced and, uh, and endometrial cancer. Now we see the dynamic times in the therapeutic regimen of uh, endometrial cancer. Mostly we see resistant cancer. So we have to think about immunotherapy or combinations with the immunotherapy or target therapy. Unfortunately, we don't have enough predictors to understand the response. Now the trial has started as to the immune therapy of the endometrial cancer, this tumor. Uh, has a high level of MSI expression uh, with uh, the deficit of reparations. There are different regimen of treatment that will be discussed for these patients. The last slide, I'd like to say that all these variants that are important, we show no effectiveness, toxicity, but unfortunately, and cost of this therapy.